What is up, everybody? This is Night Shift, and I'm back with episode four of my UMass Dynasty, and I'm here showing you the recruiting and uh, what's going on. So I'm gonna finish scouting my uh, my important guys, which this guy is my most important guy. He ends up a plus three, but I think he's gonna play way higher than that. And you'll notice that I got a couple of safeties, and safeties are good because they can play multiple positions, and uh, they can do that without losing overall rating. A lot of safeties are good at linebacker, and actually some are good at defensive end, which is weird, but interesting. I don't usually put them at the end, but I do like to put free safeties at linebacker. If they can tackle well, they got some speed. They turn out to be very good linebackers. Alright, so we're going to finish up by scouting this linebacker right here. He had A speed but dropped to 85. That's still pretty good for a linebacker, so that's not the end of the world. So we're going to keep him on there. Plus a lot of outside linebackers that I recruit, I end up moving to defensive end anyway. An 85 speed on the defensive end is pretty good. You'll notice that I'm on first on everybody's intent, and there's only a couple of guys with multiple scholarship offers. Well, except for these guys at the bottom. I'm pretty much going to erase them off the list now. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do right here. I'm going to drop this guy off, knock that guy off. This guy's a 49 overall. There's 60 outside linebackers at Juco, so we'll get rid of him. Finally get rid of this guy. And now we have 26 guys. I only have 25 roster spots, so I'm going to have to pick one of them not to um, sign at the end. But for now, all these tackles are actually pretty important, but... I'm the only one really going for them except for this guy and uh, I think it's going to be easy to get past those other schools so we're just going to do the 10 minutes on the other guys 20 minutes on this guy just to see if I really have a shot with him and uh, go back to 10 minutes on this guy just doing finishing up their promises first three weeks or first four weeks are easy because you can move up on all these guys' lists with their uh, with their three promises and scholarship offer all consecutively in the first four weeks. It's very easy to move up, especially if you're the only guy recruiting them. It's how you get the recruiting done, as you can see. Um, it's very, very unlikely that somebody's going to swoop in and take any of these guys from me. I have such a big lead that uh, the other teams have given up except for the ones like that guy who I just took the lead. But uh, that's the idea behind the promises. And honestly the thing about promises are in year three the promises really can start to majorly affect the way you recruit. Considering you see I'm getting about 170-ish points every time I make a promise. In year 3, you can get up to about like 350, 360 for a single promise for one week. Oh, there we got our first scholarship accepted. Jamal Brown, wide receiver. Three-star guy. Not too bad. That'll work. Alright, so... Anyway, you see how I just talked to that guy real quick? I only got a six. That's why you don't really want to talk to guys for the first four weeks. You can't risk having spending ten minutes on a guy and only coming up with a six or a negative eight or something like that. It just doesn't make sense. So you want to just build your lead with those promises and scholarship offer. And then once it doesn't matter anymore, I got a 380 point lead on this guy. So no, I have no promises left, so I gotta try to find some points out of this guy somehow. And it gives me a low for my B, which sucks. And a least for my C, which sucks even more. 
good news is South Carolina doesn't care about him. They don't realize how good he's actually going to be. So we'll see about that. So now every time I get a chance on these guys, I'm trying to sway. Any, anything I can sway, I'm trying to sway. Because, <laughs> well, there's nothing to actually gain by not swaying their pitches. Plus, I talked about in the other videos how if you actually do get their pitches swayed, then uh, you'll get more than one most show up when you do the, um, the recruiting visit. So that's another good reason to just keep swaying as much as you can. Plus, you don't lose out on that many extra points, and these guys, the points are minimal. So getting this above average to, say, a high would be much more advantageous than uh, just keeping on using the the above average. We're down to our top eight guys, indoor into some gyms. Uh, start using an hour, or maybe like 40, 50 minutes, so we don't waste any time on uh, on some things that guys are going to get minimal points on or even negative points on. I'm going to make sure I get everybody visiting when I play Bowling Green. No. Well, this guy's going to visit during Bowling Green. Bowling Green's an easy W, or at least it should be. We'll see. But uh, I got some guys visiting week 5. Honestly, the visits are really not going to matter, but they are going to help me uh, progress some of these guys along so that they will finally soft commit and then finally commit quickly so I can focus my attention on those other guys, like the uh, five tackles that I have at the bottom of the list. I um, They're not the most important thing, obviously, but without a good offensive line, you can't run the ball, you can't pass the ball. So it's kind of a moot point if you don't pick up some of those guys. It just so happens that nobody is going after those guys, so I think I can get them just the way they are. Just the way they are. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's just string them along for 10 points a week. Should still have no problems getting them. Alright. See, most D plus. 29 points, that's so... <sighs> exactly. Make sure I get all these guys um, that are ready to visit their, uh, their visits. Make sure to use about 40 minutes. Now yeah, we got a sway there. And another sway there, that's nice, that'll help later. Nothing, 11 points. And you get the bonus for letting him talk about whatever he wants. Alright, 40 point, or 40 minutes. That was a good sway right there. I'll fail. And let him talk about whatever. And then, you know, plus 3. It's just, it's not, uh, when you're a bad school, it's just really hard to get any points at all without offering promises. Or at least having something that you're good at that the prospect likes. And let's face it, some guys are exactly like this guy. They're low, very low, and least on the two things that you're even remotely good at. Which makes it even more difficult to recruit them. And that's why... This guy being my favorite guy, like I use negative points right there. I had to follow my own advice and not do an hour on this guy. And there's 10. We're lucky with 10 there. Make sure he gets his visit in. I'll send him in against Bowling Green. Make sure that I, I win that week. Alright, we have two guys left, so let's split them up 40 and 30. And that's a nice, nice uh, sway right there. And get this guy visiting week five. Get his visit up sooner. Alright. 
it's from last guy. More than likely, I'm the only guy really anywhere on this guy. And he's the only one that I've been able to compare so far to the school, so that works. The, uh, the compare uh, school in this game works very well. Once you get your stats up there, it's really easy in the beginning process to uh, really bash the school that's uh, on top if you're not, or in second when you're in first. If you, if you have something like an A+, in Coach Prestige, or something like that, it's really easy to uh, bash the other schools, so you're going to want to do that later on. For now, I'm going to check out the championship contender to show you what's, uh, what's up with that. We're up to 97, and at the top you can see we're still a one-star school. We're 61 overall and a 64 on offense and a 60 on defense, so <laughs> that's not very good. So we're going to have to work on that. Alright, so that's the end of the recruiting part of this video. Up next is the highlights from the next game against... Miami of Ohio. So this one should be a great that. one. Hi everybody. And I'm Brad Nessler with Kirk Curb Street and Aaron Andrews. Nice to have you along with us. This presentation of college football is brought to you by Coke Zero. Real Coke taste, zero calories. Enjoy everything. Today's game is between the UMass Minutemen and the Miami Redhawks. So we're gonna pick this game up in the about the end of the first quarter and uh, I'm gonna get sacked there on third down I'm gonna have to punt it and uh, after a little bit of a drive a few plays later they drive down inside the five and I get them to third and goal and they get wide open break in for a touchdown that's really bad but we'll, we're gonna see how bad all right so on my next possession an amazing interception right there. Don't know really how he caught that, but he did. All right, next possession. I really thought I was going to sack him. Ends up being a huge play for them. A couple of plays later, I get him to fourth down. They're going to knock in this field goal right here. Barely. But it does go in and count for three. All right. On the next drive, I... Um, I'm going to try this play again where I throw it over the middle, but I get sacked again on third down. And with 24 seconds to go on their next possession, they're going to try to kick this 54-yard field goal, and uh, they're going to miss. Alright, on the ensuing drive, I'm going to try to get into field goal range real quick before halftime. And, uh, wow, boy, that was a mistake. Should have just ran it, ran the clock out, took the 10 0 deficit to halftime, but I didn't. And they're in field goal range to kick a 50 yarder, and he actually makes the 51 yard field goal. So, that sucks. Alright, we come back at the beginning of the fourth quarter, or the fourth, at the beginning of the third period, and an amazing pass and catch right there. Puts them up 19 to nothing. And a couple of plays later, they do the same thing again. Score again. It's now 27 to nothing. Let's see if I can actually get some offense in this game. Alright, finally, big play. Big, big play to Michael. I'm going to get on the board with seven. Nice uh, 82 yard pass. Uh, next drive here on third and seven. And an amazing running back was basically doing that to me the whole game. I just could not tackle him to save my life. Every time it was third down, they, uh, they pretty much converted it with that running back. And there's the backup scoring a touchdown right there. Now it's 34 to 7. It's getting late in the third quarter. I try to get things something started right there, but I throw a pick. And he's gonna return that in there into the end zone for a touchdown. And now it's 41 to 7. 
I really need to score and score quickly. So we're going to throw this one up and deep. And he gets behind the defense. We're going to make it 41-14. Do I smell a comeback? Maybe. All right. We get the ball back after a three and out. And on the very next possession. And any dreams of a comeback end right there. And, uh, oh, no, it's a fumble. We still have a chance. So, uh, on the ensuing drive, after a couple of nice plays, we're going to go deep. And we had to score quick, so throw the pick at the two. And a couple of plays later after that, they run this option. And I get a safety. So, I mean, still somewhat in it for a miracle and we're going to try this one more time going deep and the throw comes up short and it's intercepted again and that's pretty much going to do it this is why I say that I wouldn't want to get into a shootout with anybody because you're really going to lose to the computer if you try to if you try to win a shootout with a bad team so I'm going to take the take the loss 41 to 16 here pretty much got killed couldn't move the ball on offense at all. Had a couple of nice plays in there that I showed you guys, but that was pretty much it. Uh, I'll show you guys the stats real quick. Ends up, he was 5 of 18 for 2 touchdowns and 5 interceptions, which is ridiculous. And I only ran the ball for 7 times for 52 yards because I was behind so fast that I had to throw the ball which is a recipe for disaster when you're playing with a one-star school that's that's terrible and no pressure no picks alright guys that's it for this video have a good one and if there's any Call of Duty zombie lovers make sure you check us out at miazombieclan.com and check out some of our videos peace